All right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us. The UN has elected Professor Diret Ladi to, bench, to the bench of the International Court of Justice. He becomes the first South African to serve in this capacity. President Cyril Ramaphosa has congratulated Professor Tladi on his appointment. He was previously a legal advisor for the South African mission in New York and special advisor to South African International Relations Minister. Tladi joins us now for more information. Prof, congratulations. Did you expect this to come um <laughs> at times i thought it would happen and then there were times when i thought it wasn't going to happen it was uh it was a roller coaster ride um yeah it was a very difficult night uh you know uh, yeah no there were moments when it looked like it's going to happen and then there were moments when it looked like it wasn't going to happen yeah. So, yeah i know that they started voting from like the 9th of october last year so i'm sure you uh, or rather 9th of october last month that is uh, so i'm sure you were on your uh, feet on your knees praying everything in between so as south africans of course we're proud of you and we understand why uh, you uh, were a candidate and why you're actually in uh, or in the on the bench rather you are the professor of international law at university of pretoria you're a fellow at the institute of comparative and international law in africa you have degrees in cum laude and llb it's Etc. Um, and admitted as an advocate for the High Court back in the 2000s. So we understand why they might have chosen you or why you stood out. But why do you think this happened? Um, I mean, I think uh, look, the, the election process is a you know is a mixture of uh, search for competence and in mm. um, politics. Um, I think my background, uh, you know, which mixes a little bit of, uh, you know, international law practice, uh, yeah. you know, and academia, um, is just the right profile. It's the kind of profile that you normally find um, at the International Court of Justice, and so that's certainly one reason. <clears throat> you know, but another reason is that as a um, a government, I think that South Africa worked really, really hard. Um, you know, there was a very strong team. Um, that ran the campaign uh, both here and in New York. Um, you know, we made sure, I think we held um, more than 265 meetings, um, and that's between, uh, uh, that's between July and now. Yeah, I think 255 meetings is a lot um, in such a short space of time. So there was a, a very strong team um, behind me um, that sort of put this all together. So in a sense, it was, you know, obviously my own competence and expertise, but a lot of it is really... Um, the hard work that was put in by um, um, by many officials within the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, and also, uh, okay. you know, the presidency. I'm um, 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 and the Minister of Foreign Affairs itself, um, the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation itself. Yeah, because, I mean, you were also lead counsel in many of the cases that we took forward uh, at the ICC. Uh, but, Prof, also, you, your job is only starting now here in terms of global justice for Africa. You have a, you have a huge uh, fight ahead of you. Yeah, I mean, look, I've, I guess I've been involved in, in um, you know, um, the implementation, application, development of international law mm. um, at many different levels in the past. You know, as a member of the International Law Commission, uh, you, you know, you mentioned also um, as counsel before international courts and tribunals. This is certainly going to be a contribution at a completely different level, at a much yeah. higher level. Um, and so in that sense, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there are a lot of big cases um, on the docket of the International Court of Justice at the moment. Um, so Russia, Ukraine, um, mm -hmm. um, the situation in Palestine, which is actually the first hearing that I'll be sitting in uh, on um, uh, an advisory opinion on climate change and the obligations of states, uh, you, you know, to mitigate climate change. So there, there are a lot of really big and important cases. Um, and I'm looking forward uh, to being a part of that and contributing at that new level. Mm, and I mean, that's in February, right? You start in February. So already in February, you'll be uh, sitting in a tribunal discussing what's happening in the Middle East. That's right. That's correct. That's correct. Mm. So I believe the, the um, yeah, I, it, it's around about the 17th, 18th of February that the hearing on the situation in Palestine will be uh, before the International Court of Justice. Mm. If you could just help me understand, at least, Prof, um, me and probably those who are watching us who, are, who want to also understand, how close is uh, the International Criminal Court to the bench that you're joining? Uh, obviously, these speak yeah. to each other. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they're, they're both international courts. Um, yeah. The main difference is that the International Criminal Court tries um, individuals who are accused of committing international crimes or war yeah. crimes, crimes against humanity, aggression um, and genocide, whereas the International Court of Justice is principally responsible for the settlement of disputes between states. 
Yeah. Um, 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 so that's the one difference. The the other difference is that the International Court of Justice, the court that I'll be joining, um, its mandate is not just limited to criminal matters. I mean, criminal matters is one is one yeah, aspect of its okay. work, um, but it's broader. I mean, any international law, um, so issue whether you're talking about a boundary dispute, who owns that territory, climate change. Um, so it's it's the court with the broadest subject matter jurisdiction. Mm. Uh, so you say that, for instance, uh, uh, obviously the ICC deals with individuals and you deal with states and possibly even yeah. not just criminal cases, but maybe civil cases as well, etc. Would the ICC ever get recommendations from your court? I'm, I'm calling it your court already <laughs> from your court, uh, for instance, or the court that you're going to now work for uh, in terms of individuals that must be um, you know, dealt with for crimes against humanity. Yeah. Not recommendations as such. Um, yeah. I mean, the two courts are completely independent. Um, okay. But a lot of the questions that might arise, for example, at the International Criminal Court um, may also arise at the, um, the International Court of Justice. And so, for example, one of the, the key issues um, in the ICC, um, and that's one of the reasons why we appeared uh, before the ICC, concerns immunity and the law, um, the rules of international law yes. relating to immunity. That's actually an interstate issue. Now, we were dealing with it in the context of an individual, in that case, Bashir, and it also came up recently in in, in, in the instance of um, the Russian president, um, mm. um, so Putin. But it actually is an interstate dispute. So it's not inconceivable that the ICJ could look at the same matter, but look at it from the perspective of um, an interstate dispute. The, the rules themselves would be the same. And so um, in that respect, it is very possible that the jurisprudence of the International Court of Justice could influence um, the jurisprudence of the International Criminal Court. But by the way, the, the reverse is also true, right? It's also possible that the jurisprudence of the International Criminal Court can influence um, yeah. the jurisprudence of the ICJ. Ultimately, it's about how solid the reasoning of either court is and how, you know, how convincing it is for the other court. Mm. And uh, you start in February, I believe your, your term would be uh, nine years? Nine years, that's correct. So what does that mean in terms of all your other responsibilities? Because now you're looking at justice for the international world. So everybody, yeah. uh, you know, will be making applications. Then I, I assume it'll be very busy for all 15 of you uh, on the bench. So yes. what does that mean in terms of your current responsibilities? Well, I mean, I, I guess at some point I'll have to resign <laughs> from the University of Pretoria. Um, I, I would, of course, like to, um, uh, you know, continue to be responsible, at least for the PhD students that I have, because I think that that's very important. That's something that's really close, um, you know, to my heart, um, developing future international lawyers, and in particular future international lawyers from our continent. Um, so what, um, uh, and so one way or the other, I'd like to be involved in, 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 in that project. Um, you know, it'll obviously have to be at a reduced level. It can't be at the level that it is now. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see how that, that pans out. I'll have to have a, obviously a conversation with the University of Victoria about whether that's possible. Mm. I'd also have to look and see about whether it's possible in terms of the rules of the court, because I don't really know, obviously, I mean, I, I, you know, I haven't been a member of the court and, and there may well be rules there also that restricts the possibility. But I think that those are things that over the next couple of weeks will be explored and, and, and decided upon. All right, my parting question to you, Prof, you know that there's a trust deficit between South Africans as citizens uh, and, um, you know, the judicial system. But you obviously are looking at it from an international perspective. Uh, what do you make of the judicial system uh, on an international level, justice there, etc.? Could more be done? So one thing I will say, yeah, so one thing I will say about um, in terms of the International Court of Justice, at least, um, states which are the subjects, if you like, sort of the nationals of the international system, um, they really respect, um, in general, they really respect um, the International Court of Justice. Um, in fact, one of the messages that I had throughout the campaign is, look, vote for the best candidate, because ultimately you want to maintain the integrity of the court and you want to maintain the respect with which the court is held. And that only happens if you vote for the best candidate and not allow, you know, um, so political machinations to sort of outweigh the expertise of the candidate. All right, Prof, thank you so much for your time and congratulations once again. Hopefully South Africans will also uh, come say goodbye to you in February when you leave uh, from the OR Tambo <laughs> International <laughs> Airport. Uh, so Professor much. Diret Ladi, he is the newest member of the International Court of Justice.